Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Today, we're taking a look at a clip where somebody says, the doctor told me I'm obnoxiously healthy, despite the fact that I'm morbidly obese. Is this going to be another classic case of my blood work so good? Stick around to find out. Before we proceed, please click the like button so that I may apply comb to mustache. Fat girls. If you're not a fat girl, move along. This is for my fat girls. Aw, oh, come on. I want to know. Now I'm intrigued and I have to know. What are you guys going to talk about? That's right. All you skinny minis, click off. This is the third doctor in a row to tell me that I'm obnoxiously healthy. <laughs> <laughs> obnoxiously healthy that's pretty darn healthy i've seen like casual health before but i don't know if i've seen somebody that was obnoxiously healthy like it's annoying you're annoying everybody around you with your health i'm just sitting here trying to have a cup of coffee oh my god i can't believe how healthy you are this is ridiculous dude what are you doing what are you even doing three doctors in a row told her she was obnoxiously healthy. Same wording too. They all used that phrase, obnoxiously healthy. A phrase that I've never heard a doctor use in my entire life, but she heard it three times. Okay. <laughs> what are we doing? What even is this? Not obnoxiously healthy for a fat girl, like literally just obnoxiously healthy. Oh, is that a fact? Just obnoxiously healthy in general, not for a fat girl. So like compared to other people who are not morbidly obese, you are healthier than they are. This is weird. I don't know what medical school that doctor went to, but uh. Okay, so you're too healthy. Um, this reminds me of an episode of Family Guy, I believe it was, where Peter came back from the doctor and he's like, he said I was too healthy actually. Uh. <laughs> Three doctors in a row told you you're obnoxiously healthy. Because when you're obnoxiously healthy, you go to three doctors. Clearly. Sorry, sorry, not trying to poke holes in the logical fallacies of the story. I started going to the doctor consistently two years ago because I was trying to solve a problem that didn't need to be solved. Mm hmm. So healthy that you started going to the doctor consistently two years ago. Okay, so somebody that's obnoxiously healthy goes to the doctor for two years straight consistently. Okay. This person has one of those weird, like, fake, upbeat personalities. I think there are at least three subtypes of the fake, upbeat personality. It's hard to describe, like, specifically without being a total jerk impersonating the way this person speaks, but there are, like, at least three subtypes of the fake personality that is very upbeat. So she's got this one, then there's the one that's like, Oh, hi, how are you? <laughs> like Spongebob when he was normal. <laughs> The funny thing about being fakely nice is that it's not nice. That's the thing about being fake in any sort of way. Putting on a nice sweater does not make us nice. Cartman. I'm not calling this person Cartman. She seems pretty nice, so. Her being so healthy is pretty obnoxious, but other than that, she seems pretty nice, so let's not go in on her too hard. I was like, why am I fat? Why do I work out and I'm still fat? Like, I don't get it. Like, what's wrong with me? I must be unhealthy. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, was this before or after he told you that you were obnoxiously healthy? No, this was before, right? Years ago, you went to the doctor. Why am I fat? I can't lose weight. I do all the right things. I am a medical anomaly and an anomaly of physics. Um, I cannot lose weight. Was This was all before he, he told you that you were obnoxiously healthy. So after two years of going to the doctor consistently for whatever reason, he told you that you were obnoxiously healthy. I'm not sure what the point of this story is. So I pressed my doctor, I said, I do the Stairmaster five times a week, I weight lift, I work out like crazy, I eat okay, why don't I look like it? I eat okay, okay, there's your answer. People seem to just think that working out means you're going to be in good shape, but like I've said before, and like many other people have said, you cannot outrun a bad diet. The type of processed garbage food that we have access to today, you cannot burn off on the Stairmaster. You can work out all day, every day, but if you're eating the wrong kinds of foods, you're not going to lose weight and you're not going to accomplish your fitness goals. The three most important things to weight loss are diet, diet, and diet. I can sit here and lose weight doing nothing for the rest of my life. I will just eat less than I burn. If I burn very little, I will eat even less. Is it that simple? No. If you start eating the right kinds of foods, you will stop craving this highly processed stuff. 
the reason some of you have infinite hunger is because you're eating stuff that is not food. So it's never going to make you full. It has to have nutrition in it to make you full. I can become morbidly obese and be malnourished at the same time. How about that? What a world we live in. What a time to be alive. So then they did a test and then they found out that my testosterone levels are a little bit higher than normal. Just by themselves. Got nothing to do with the hormonally active adipose tissue. Okay. The chicken and the egg. We're getting confused here. Which came first? And the crazy thing is, is that my testosterone levels have probably been higher than normal my whole life. Just randomly. Just out the blue. You sure it's not the fact that adipose tissue is hormonally active and you have a lot more androgens than you should? Androgen excess is often associated with obesity states at any age of life because of changes in the pattern of secretion of metabolism of androgens and in their actions at the level of target tissues, particularly the adipose tissue. It is not the testosterone levels causing you to gain weight. It's the weight gain and the excess adipose tissue that is raising your testosterone levels. Or since puberty, because I've been fat since puberty. Mmm. Mmm. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. I lost 70 pounds once and... And your testosterone levels went way down. <laughs> I bet you did not get them tested at that time, right? I was on birth control and I didn't correlate like, oh, like... You have a hormonal imbalance, that's why you lost 70 pounds when you're on birth control. Hormones can do a lot, but they cannot make you gain or lose 70 pounds. There's definitely some dietary changes in there. It doesn't matter how out of whack your hormones are, you cannot pull calories from the air. Why do I have to keep saying this bizarre statement that you cannot pull calories from the air? Why do I have to even say those words? Those words should never have to be strung together. And yet here we are saying it repeatedly like every day. So I've been to three doctors and they have all stated that I'm very, very healthy. Obnoxiously healthy, right? By what standards? Like they, they took your blood work or whatever, like that means anything? Dude, I've seen every type of messed up individual have healthy blood work. At this point, I'm starting to think blood work isn't really good for much. <laughs> if it says that morbidly obese people are fine, I'm beginning to doubt the value of blood work at this point. My blood work came back and they were like, your liver is good, your kidneys are good. <laughs> your pancreas? Is your pancreas good? Is it chill? Everything's so good. Everything is so good. Apparently for problems to show up in your blood, they have to have been a problem for quite a while already. From everything that I've heard and read. Which makes sense because you have all these morbidly obese people being like, my blood was fine. I can't breathe, but my blood is good. <laughs> I just had a heart attack. But my blood was good. They did the blood work while I was in there. So just because you're fat doesn't mean you're lazy and unhealthy. It also doesn't mean that you're obnoxiously healthy. That's for damn sure. In fact, it definitely doesn't mean that. This is a weird story to make up, honestly. That's, that's not what that means. And of course, I'm going to continue doing what I've been doing, which is breaking out consistently, eating healthy-ish. Eating healthy-ish? Okay, well, I recommend if you don't want to continue to waste your time and throw all of your hard work into the toilet, um, that you get your diet in order. Personally, I don't want to go work out every day and still be fat. To me, that's a big fat waste of time. Pun intended. If you're going to do all the work of going to the gym and everything anyway, you may as well fuel your body right so you get actual results. If you think that you can eat highly processed sugary sweets and then go to the gym and see results, you're mistaken. As soon as you eat something sweet, your body immediately gets to work trying to get it out of your blood. All other metabolic processes will go on hold until this is done. Similarly to drinking alcohol, things that will kill your gains. Alcohol, sugar, and processed carbs. And moving forward with my life, there's no point of me changing or making all these changes just to fit into beauty societal standards. There's no sense in making all these changes just to fit into beauty societal standards. But you're trying to do something, trying to lose weight, which is why you're going to the gym, but you're not doing it properly because you're eating a bunch of stupid food. So you're basically just banging your head into a wall and you're like, I don't know why I can't lose weight. You went to the doctor to be like, I don't know why I can't lose weight. I'm doing everything healthy. They run the blood tests. They say you're obnoxiously healthy. We don't know what's going on here. So you say, okay, I'll continue to do what I'm doing. What's the definition of insanity? To keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Something like that. Some people try to be like, I just go to the gym for the exercise because it's good for you or whatever. If you're saying I go to the gym just for the exercise and not to change the way that I look, that sounds like copium to me. Like you're not getting the results that you want at the gym. I go to the gym not just to get healthy, but also to look dope. I want to look good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I actually want to look good. Is that so wrong? I don't want to hurt anybody. I'm not going to hurt others if I do look good. I just want to look good. <laughs> 
Is it so wrong? No, it's not. And as it turns out, uh, what looks good is actually healthy. That's why it looks good to you, because it's healthy. You're attracted to signs of health. If a man says that they want a healthy woman, then they want me, period. Okay, um, okay, I, I want you. I'm sorry. Um. <laughs> if a man says they want a healthy woman, they want me, period. Okay, it sounds like there's not a choice here. Um, so you got a little intense there. Uh, when you said period, you went period. Like you were smiling and everything. <laughs> they said I was obnoxiously healthy. This is crazy. If you want a healthy woman, you want me. Period. All right, man. Okay. It got a little intense at the end there. You're kind of scaring me. Let's just pump the brakes on the craziness a little bit. The only thing that came back... Hair change. ...at normal was my vitamin D levels were really, really low, which... Okay, well, it sounds like these tests are bollocks, bro. <laughs> sounds like whatever test they gave you was a big waste of time. You go to the doctor. Doctor, I got a gunshot wound in my shoulder. I'm bleeding out. Help me, please. Let's see. According to this test, you're doing just fine. What? What are you talking about? I am currently bleeding out all over the floor. You can see it right here. Well, you are spilling blood all over the floor, but according to these tests, that blood is in good shape. It's very good. It's good blood. Really? Oh, wow. That does make me feel a little bit better. You know, the fact that I'm bleeding out currently is really not that good. Man, look at all that good blood all over the floor. Healthiest blood I ever saw. <laughs> Are you still watching? Are you still watching? Damn those doctors. <laughs> Stop testing obese people's blood, dude. You're giving them false hope, okay? Doctors, you know the blood test doesn't mean anything. Stop giving it to people. Is genetic because my mom and my dad both have really low vitamin D levels. Your vitamin D levels are genetic? What? What kind of nonsense are they teaching you? How can your vitamin levels be genetic? I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just an idiot, dude. I don't know. My vitamin D is genetically low. <laughs> what do you mean? You sure you guys don't need to just like drink some milk or get some sun or take a multivitamin or something? I'm genetically malnourished, man. My mom was skinny. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was looking at my lab work myself, I was like, well, my cholesterol looks a little, a little bit high. And they were like, no, like your cholesterol is normal. Like, okay, so you were interpreting the lab results yourself. You're like, doc, actually, that looks a little high to my eye, you know. And the doctor's like, oh, actually, that's fine. And you're like, doctor, listen, I didn't spend eight years in medical school to be told what to do by you. In fact, I didn't spend eight years in medical school at all. Oh, period. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. Cholesterol looks a little bit high, and they were like, no, like your cholesterol's normal. I was like, oh, period, period. That's your gotcha moment, okay. Well, it seems like you went to three different doctors over the course of the past couple years or whatever you said, because you couldn't lose weight. I'm guessing the doctor said you're not eating correctly, and that's why you can't lose weight. But if you want, we'll run a bunch of blood tests on you, because whatever. We don't mind taking your blood and testing a little bit, you know? Down here at the hospital, we like to fuck around. <laughs> We just like to play games. <laughs> so you went to the doctor because you couldn't lose weight. You told him, I've been exercising, I've been eating okay-ish, and I can't seem to lose weight. And he's like, gee, I don't know what's going on. Let's run a bunch of blood tests on you. And then they did, and they came back saying that you were healthy. And now you're like, I'm super healthy. If you don't want to date obese people because you think they're unhealthy, you are mistaken. I am healthy. Date me. Okay, did the doctor ever tell you what the cause of your inability to lose weight was? Did he say it was because of your genetically low vitamin D levels? <laughs> I don't wanna hear nothing about, oh, you need to stop eating cheeseburgers. I'm not even 500 cheeseburgers away from a heart attack, so. Anybody who says stop eating cheeseburgers and that's the way you lose weight doesn't understand weight loss. It's those greasy burgers. No, it's not, homie. It's those carbs and sugar. Everybody really does need to get out of diet culture. And what I mean by that is what people used to think it means to lose weight like 10 years ago or whatever, before everybody woke up. It's interesting that this concept of low fat still prevails to this day. Some people have a diet that is all fat and they are not obese and they don't have clogged arteries and they don't get a heart attack. Oh, <laughs> oh get dunked on, I can't lose weight. <laughs> All right, so I hope that makes some of you guys feel better. I mean, of course, I've been working out consistently for like ever. Of course, right. You keep on mentioning that because it's so super real and it's totally happening. It is so easy to work out when you're morbidly obese, let me tell you. And when you've eaten nothing but highly processed garbage food, surely you have plenty of energy to go to the gym. 
I'm probably one of the healthiest people in my family when it comes to like exercise. When I was 60 pounds heavier than I am now, it was a lot more difficult to exercise. But you know, your journey's your journey. You wanna make sure you go with your doctor and figure out like what's good for you. But for me, I'm just drinking my protein shake and living my life. Okay, so she is too healthy by her own doctor's account. She's drinking a protein shake, she's going to the gym, and she's not losing any weight. But her blood is good. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but if you're continually going to the gym and not losing weight, it's your diet. Some bizarre cope. <laughs> I am a medical anomaly when it comes to weight loss. I am just keeping the weight on even though I'm doing all the right things. But I'm obnoxiously healthy. That blood though, some of the best blood the doctor's ever seen. Which seems to be a common theme among other fat activists. I don't know if this person is a fat activist or not. They're just saying a bunch of silly nonsense, so here we are. We recently made it to 40,000 subscribers on the channel. Thank you all so much for subscribing. I really appreciate each and every one of you. And now that we've made it to 40,000, help me get to 50,000. It's never good enough. Nothing's ever good enough. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Please click the like button. One like equals one mustache comb. Anyway, that about does it. Thanks for watching, commenting, liking, and subscribing. And I'll see you in the next one.